my history of really not only study with my teacher, but a deeper experience in probably the largest you know, retreat center, at least in China. Um, it's called Medicine's Qigong Hospital, but basically it's a retreat center. And um, with 3,000, even at the time, 5,000 people. And um, starting with one week long, I mean, four weeks long, then you can extend into you know, two weeks, three weeks. Most people stay for three weeks long. And I was fortunate enough to do the same thing, but also did two years of residential retreat, so to speak. And so this is the experience, it's the history in my life journey. And the reflect on that is really fortunate. I feel really fortunate because not a lot of people have an opportunity to do that. And um, even for myself, I was uh, fortunate enough catching the last train before the Medicine and Qigong Hospital totally closed down. Now it's closed, in, you know, that's like two days ago, it's closed. So I was uh, mm -hmm. catch last training. But the experience, you know, the power, the benefit, and the deeper <clears throat> exploration, deeper discovery, you know, often is only possible with such intense um, retreat, so, you know, context. So it is kind of a universal in all spiritual tradition. For serious practitioner, you want to go as far as you want, as far as you can. Retreat is basically the best option, no question about it. <laughs> best option, right? <laughs> so now the second best option we have is um, online retreat and still retreat. But then the third best option is um, online program. It could it be weekly, could it be weekend, and could it be a membership program allow you continuing? These are all wonderful options. But I still think from my experience, yeah, the team is the best options. And for obvious- Can you tell us what do you mean by uh, online retreat? I am not familiar with online retreats. What is that? Hi, good question. So now the new technology make it possible. It's like first time in human history. <laughs> we can, like this moment right now, yeah. We share together, having a conversation. I can share, you know, my experience and teach the students, but also guiding the practice. We can dance together. We can, you know, addressing your questions, and we can also a breakout room, share deeply in personal ways, and that's often is very, very powerful, very powerful. So that is not only can happen nowadays. Many of you have attended um, weekly class this way even weekend, but you can do retreat, you know, at comfort at home. So it's like, okay, the schedule from whatever time, seven or 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. or even 9 p.m. You arrange your schedules and you kind of show up in front of your computer and then the process is same. But when you get into the energetic, you feel like um, the teacher is right in your house, right in front of you. And there's also, you can occasionally see the group, you know, in the gallery view. And you can, <laughs> you know, even have a lunch meal together, you know, in breakout <laughs> session. So this is like new phenomenon with a new technology. It's incredible, it's incredible. And obviously that's slightly different than in-person retreat, yeah. So the connection in-person, yeah, it's the most intimate, most direct, most spontaneous. Yeah, most physically, our some energy from energetic point of view, it's more whole experience. Yeah, whole experience, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, five sensory. You know, perception all around you in the moment. You know, that's the experience. Yeah, qigong is all about experience. It's all about connection from this whole experience you discover who we are you know the meaning of life and the possibility of healing transformation 
and spiritual realization. So the online retreat to a certain degree, yeah, as I said, second best. You still can connect, you have a five sensory experience, but still, you know, cannot replace the in-person, in-person experience. And that is no question about it. So we need to acknowledge the advantage, just the advantage of both, you know, the advantage for online is make it accessible. You don't have to travel, you can save money and you can stay comfortably at home. And so these are advantage, but obviously, you know, have a um, full experience, you know, it requires additional effort, traveling, and even leaving the context of your home, your everyday life, that's the point of retreat. The retreat is about creating this energetic space and the time. It's different from everyday routine, busy life, busy responsibility, externally engaged. And in this case, is in this time frame, could it be week long, could it be one month long, ideally much longer. And so you can go deeper, go deeper into yourself. Yeah, everything is arranged for you already. Food is cooked for you, bed <laughs> is beautifully comfortable. All the beautiful nature is available. All the support is available from the teacher and the community and so on. So speaking of the experience of retreat, and I love to share a video which can only truly can communicate, communicate the experience of retreat without even attending one. So I'm going to share that video first, then we can engage with more kind of a uh, spontaneous questions um, from Lama or from the participant. Yeah. So Great. Bill, yes. uh, let's play the movie. Thanks. And yeah, the human touch in fear of space and time. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Yeah, nice Hi. to see you. Melinda and Melinda. Melinda and Melinda. How are you? Melinda with a Y and Melinda with an I. Yeah. Oh, so, so we have several options to show you because I've been thinking about the amount of movement between rooms. Yes. So why don't we sign in? Yep. And start here with an option. Yes. Nice to see you here, Dan. Yep, see you later. <laughs> Mine as well. How many of you feel a little bit anxious too? That's good. In the right place, okay? Feeling both, feeling both. And there's something excited about, but also something we're not sure about. Embracing all the experience of arriving here in the Chi Center, in this beautiful, magical healing land. Sure. So the most essential piece of wisdom healing Qigong is slow experience for you to discover, yeah, discover pure energy beyond the form of existence. And discover this uh, continuous process of creation is transformation from formless to form, from formless to formlessness.
we are in this uh, most beautiful place, most beautiful company together, enjoy the meal together. Yes? Yeah. I call this as a five-star restaurant. <laughs> Truly, for me, this is a five-star restaurant. So analyzing the food, whatever gratitude you say to the food, take a few seconds. You feeling the saliva coming out of the food. The feeling. Everybody do that. In your mouth. Do the saliva. Feel the saliva. And our our gifts help unlock all of that. Yeah. So. Yes, definitely. I mean, we. Yeah, I feel the same way. I want to go back to things that kind of blow my skirt up, so to speak, that make me really, really happy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but things that just, you know, make me want to get up in the morning. Besides the sunlight. Thank you. I like to be a lizard in the sun. <laughs> so universal, the saying, following your heart, so amazingly profound. But you have to connect with your heart. You have to feel your heart. You have to continue to discover the wholeness, the oneness, the essence of your heart. So this Deeper question, when we're connecting, coming back to love. What is love? What is this love? Simply noticing the sensation, feeling in your body, in your heart. Feeling the energy of these words as shared inside you. The main thing I discovered was actually a rediscovery of uh, a life I left. Oh, let's see, <laughs> 40 years ago. And brought that beautiful expression that is so uh, deeply important to me uh, back into my life with such joy and uh, love. I mean, deep discovery I had was uh, how much my life has been governed and, and put in a prison by the stories I tell myself and uh, uh, had not left any space for my heart to uh, be really alive. The land is a sacred blessing. That's what I feel. They don't call it the land of enchantment for nothing. And this is a particularly enchanting corner of it. <laughs> How that, I feel so supported and connected um, by that kind of feeling when I have on this, this old and wise land. Um, my heart is fuller now with love and joy than it was when I arrived. The land makes me feel expansive and joyful. My spiritual name came to me as Heart Singer. 
and I reconnected with work I'd done singing for the dying and I want to see what possibilities lie ahead that opened in this retreat. And movement, I discovered, could help me release limiting beliefs. It was wonderful. Um, I think one of the main things that I got are, these are my people. The depth and the, the spirit and the joy and the happiness and the willingness to engage and be vulnerable. Um, I think I found my tribe. I almost uh, missing feeding them today. <laughs> oh my baby, I'm all about you guys. Feeling the vibration of the water inside of your body. Feeling the wind air around you, nourish you inside of you. Continuously embracing all the sensations feeling, experience of life inside of your body, feeling the connection, internal, vertical, there's no words that can describe the beauty the magic of this land and you can only you know experience it by being here yeah and you can continuously discover so much magic so much detail so much beauties and lots of using the water as a like point if you want to know the Tao experience and then from water the way of the water is close to the essence of Tao. When you touch, the trees are touching you. When you walk on the ground, the ground is also touching you. When you're entering something you live, want to relate as sacred, one thing is very important is you ask for permission first. Yeah. Yeah, grandfather tree always say, thank you for coming, <laughs> thank you for bringing everybody here. I'm so happy to see you, all the grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling the energetic memory of 500 years or more. Now slowly, think of your hand dipping into the ground, touching the roots. 
then lifting upward slowly feeling the energy of the tree the energy of the earth merging upward connecting upward around you with the tree above you to the infinite universe feeling the connection of all trees all forest around the planet earth so since we're late for dinner let's just walk around grandmother touching her hugging her together Get up there, you feel feeling the call or feeling the adventure. Thank you, Tree. Thank you, grandmother. Thank you, grandmother. She said, she's here. your mama, that's why. <laughs> so one of the messages from the grandmother last time from uh, one of the participants in the Magical Sunday shared with me it was so beautiful I want to share with all of you when she asked me the grandmother what is your message for me and the grandmother tree said um, just remember we are important in your life and share this message with others. Tell the story of us with others. Tell us. And it was so emotional in a way. Yeah. Adjusting the tailbone, pointing downward. Secondly, is touching your chin to the back of your neck. The tendency of the neck is forward. Letting go of any analysis, simply aware, aware of your body, aware of the inner sensation, feeling, experience inside of you, aware of the inner truth in this moment. Yesterday I was um, on the labyrinth here and as I walked into the labyrinth I was thinking to myself no more worry, no more anxiety, no more worry, no more anxiety which is what I'm working with and then when I got to the middle uh, I focused on my body and what came to me was let go of control to let go of control and so today I went on the hike and I was by myself and it was, um, I had no cell phone, I ran out of water, but I really wanted to get to the top of these Rocky Mountains and my mind kept coming up with worries and fears like what if you twist your ankle, 
what if you fall what if there's a big snake what if you see a bear but I just kind of let my my head uh, do its thing but I just kept walking and I just kept walking up and up and up and up and then when I got to the top there was this beautiful juniper tree I sat on its shade with the beautiful view and I felt this wind in my face and it just dawned on me that I hadn't had this this energy on me since I was a child this spirit of adventure I was very adventurous as a child and it was just a moment of like where did that go all of those years I think in corporate world when everything is so controlled and everything is in a box just really buried those energies so deep down and today I feel like I felt it again and I don't want to lose that ever again in my life so it feels good Nice video. Thank you, Ming Kong, for sharing it. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to share this little bit longer video. And because uh, you may understand now why I'm sharing this video with all of you, really, you know, communicating the deeper experience of literature, communicating pretty much the meaning, you know, why we do literature, why. Uh, Lama was asking me the question, why I would like to have, you know, managing such big uh, literary center. <laughs> well, so what is it like for you to operate the retreat center these days? Yeah, okay, so let's go. <laughs> Both uh, challenging, amazingly rewarding, fulfilling. Challenging in a way, so much, yeah, work, so much work so much investment, so much labor of love, so much detail, so much, uh, yeah, to take care of everything, the building, the infrastructure, the land, the tree, the flowers, yeah. and absolutely rewarding for me is uh, I learned, yeah, not only discover myself as a teacher, but also as a owner of the Lichui Center, but also steward of the land, really learn, discover new passion as a landscaper, <laughs> doing all kinds of landscaping, <laughs> moving the stone, the dirt, design everything, getting all the materials, working with the team and day and night and um, plant the trees, you know, do the fertilizer and doing the irrigation system and appreciating, yeah, every part of this, yeah. Particularly, I'm still ongoing, taking care of all the tree and the plants and the irrigation system. And so much reward, so much reward. So one thing I really learned from this process, yeah. Qigong is like uh, gardening. Life is like gardening. And I have this direct experience of gardening. This is big garden, about 30, maybe 50 acre of land, which is uh, in the middle of the 150 acres of wilderness and doing a lot of gardening. It's a big garden. So it's like uh, <laughs> it takes um, a lot of water, doesn't it? A lot of water, a lot of water. So, so much more appreciation of the water, tree, every plants, every flowers, and every season, how to take care of them, enjoy them. The flower come, they go, different colors. And it's amazing, give me so much joy. So one insight I learned is really about life. Everything is about life, Qigong is about life. Practice is about life, healing is about life, spiritual realization is about life. But one of the simple insights is life is about nourishing, nourishment. Life nourishing life itself. 
When I nourish my body, my body nourishes me. When I nourish the tree, the tree nourishes me. When I nourish the fish, the dog, they're nourishing me. And that's so simple and yet so magical. So we're really learning continuously opening ourselves to that ongoing nourishment of life, discover new way of nourishment, deeper way of nourishment, the nourishment of mind, body, heart, spirit, the nourishment of each other, nourishment of life. And you get to experience that, discover that in such a, you know, design, I mean, intentional energy container of retreat. So to answer your question, you know, um, managing a retreat center, <laughs> simply, yeah. <laughs> Just like life, both challenging and rewarding. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Bye. And I have known you for two decades. And uh, at the point when we met first, you were living in Oregon, in Ashland. And then you moved uh, to North Bay area. Uh, yeah, Petaluma. Petaluma. Yeah. Petaluma. Yeah. yeah so uh, what is it like uh, for you to live in uh, New Mexico now on your retreat center as compared to the other places that you lived in previously mm -hmm. in the States? Yeah. Good question. Uh, it's like um, we all lived in different places, maybe in life and uh, realizing how the place affecting us, yeah. And how we also affecting the place. And for me, I think fortunately enough, I have lived uh, so many places in the US. Before I told Qigong, I'm more like a nomad. <laughs> I live in different state, so many different places, losing count. <laughs> then after, you know, uh, married, uh, and it's a different story, right? <laughs> but still lived in, as you said, Ashland, Oregon. We opened a small kind of Qigong studio, like a yoga studio, and had a wonderful intimate Qigong community there. But that's not really fulfilling my potential. So I was still traveling a lot, traveling a lot. And especially going to the Bay Area, eventually moving back and moving to the Bay Area, um, doing more retreat and eventually collaborating with the Earthwise Center, part of Institute of Noetic Science. So that was a wonderful experience. And then eventually realizing I'm ready for my own center, retreat center. And later on, I want to share with all of you is how the vision continuously evolved you know, after I moved here. So especially from last three years uh, during the pandemic time. So the living experience is like, um, you know, I have been living in all these beautiful places. Ashland is amazingly beautiful. Oh my God, the nature, the water, I mean, the creek and the small town, the mountains, the hills and everything is gorgeous, beautiful. You know, in terms of living a simple life, that probably one of the ideal places. So we fully enjoyed that. We had um, first the baby there, our son was born there, it was very special memory. Then for the purpose of the work, <laughs> we moved to Petaluma. <laughs> so Petaluma, the Bay Area is a big version of Ashland, abundant nature, so much green, so much abundance, so much awareness, and it's, it's wonderful, you know, close to the ocean. And we're very happy, you know, in terms of living there. But again, for the work, we moved to Santa Fe. But actually, it's a total surprise how much he, I love Santa Fe, how much now I love more to even, yeah, after all these years of living here, and especially, I can honestly say for first time in my life, yeah, because of living in Santa Fe, living on this land of the Chi Center here, I discover the most powerful connection with Mother Nature. It's beyond just words, beyond just exploration, beyond just beauty. It's a deeper energetic intimacy, connection, realization, yeah. How much, yeah, we're part of the nature, how much every sources 
our experiences of life is coming from nature, including art. This is like a big art community here in Santa Fe. Now I realize why everybody moved to Santa Fe, you know, as artist. The source of inspiration is so powerful here. So what I'm trying to say here is like, um, this experience is coming home to nature. And this is uh, really changed the way I live my life, changed the way I teach, the change way of um, understanding what is healing, what is transformation, what is spiritual realization. So it's not really about just a simple movement practice. I will learn certain practice comfortable you can do at home. Much, much more than that. Much, much more than that. And the tree is providing this experience. It's full experience, as you see this video. The moment you're arriving on the land, all the interaction with the tree, with the water, with the stone, with the sky, you know, you know all the interaction with each other, with the staff, yeah, you know, with yourself. Yeah. This all these moment-to-moment -moment experience is life. That accumulative experience, yeah, allows this continuous awareness, continuous discovery, continuous awakening can happen. It's not, oh, I'm moving my body, oh, I'm understanding my energy channel, energy gates, oh, that's this powerful thinking, this is isolated events, you're realizing, yeah, what a particular goal of healing. <laughs> it's not that simple. That's this misunderstanding. And I have to go slow my own journey of life, especially by living here to discover the deeper truths, yeah. Let me ask you another question, Mentong. How would you say a person who has experience in teaching Qigong or related disciplines could become a successful retreat leader? For example, if uh, you allow people uh, from other schools of Qigong to come and teach retreats at your center or perhaps other uh, retreat centers, what are the um, optimal or most intelligent steps uh, for them uh, to take to become a retreat leader? Mm. Thank you for asking this question. Uh, yeah, first in this context, I want to share a little bit of uh, how my personal vision is literally the vision of the land evolved in the last three years. You know, first of all, we moved here eight years ago with the idea of um, opening Wisdom Healing Qigong Retreat Center as I experienced in the Medicine Qigong Hospital in China. So this, this was the original idea, dedicating this facility, this land totally for this particular tradition, Wisdom Healing Qigong. I know the potential is there. I know it's the need is there. And deeply, I know this is also my commitment. But things happening, you know, very differently in the world right now, especially pandemic. We have to close down everything. And then also, I mean, close down the retreat center uh, for quite a period of time, move all our program to online, which is a gift, expand it, you know, reach out slow online. Now we have global community online. But on the other hand, then the big question is like uh, after the pandemic, the growing of in-person retreat is still slow, very slow. It's like still very slow, you know? So, but then the big question, you know, come to my mind is uh, what is the potential of this land? Yeah. Besides what I can do, yeah. So become very clear, yeah. The new vision for this land is uh, uh, become a home base, yeah, home base for all spiritual traditions. <laughs> all spirit tradition, obviously, particularly for Qigong, Tai Chi, or particularly Chinese tr tradition, yeah. So that is a new vision. So I'm really open, actively inviting, yeah, the teachers from different tradition, Qigong, Tai Chi, traditional Chinese medicine, to come here to teach as well, you know, mindfulness meditation tradition, even yoga tradition, also shaman tradition and uh, conscious leadership, you know, 
organization as well are definitely you know another amazing um not just tradition it's like universal language yeah we all can engage you know for me personally i'm an artist so i feel our healing spiritualization this three thing is inseparable it's almost like have to welcome cultivate simultaneously so with that said um yes we are open to actively yeah inviting other tradition to come and the place is really traditionally is a place for healing from long time ago native american tradition um, time you know ancient time that's the border of many tribe the people come here for negotiation for trade yeah and then hispanic comes and a lot of also peacemaking activity happening in these areas and then are you know continuous evolving in this areas so also there's a special story to this land and i won't have time to share the big story but briefly uh, this facility become practically manifest because of the channeling of spirit of abraham the founding father of middle east uh, and the channeling message to the first owner uh, is that he was asked to build this place as a retreat center for future wisdom teachers. And he had money to do it and who is open enough yeah, to make this happen. And so in the last two decades, first two decades was uh, Lizor Spa. And then we moved in eight years ago, become a retreat center and for seven years, this place has not been used. So we did a lot of work <laughs> to make this functional. And now we're continuously upgrading. So truly fulfilling this vision. So I'm excited for this expansion of the vision while I'm continuously, you know, building our own Qigong retreat, but also welcoming other teacher to come. So the second question about how you know, a teacher, not just from Qigong tradition, many different tradition become, you know, comfortable and discover the potential of guiding retreat. You know, my suggestion is simply do it, to simply do it. So my first retreat, you know, luckily had a confidence because of my history in the medicine chicken hospital, almost like uh, my spiritual journey is grown from the retreat experience. <laughs> so that's the way how I started my journey in a way. But for some of us, most of maybe didn't have that background. So the first step can be challenging, challenging. But when I guided retreat in the West, the first group was well, only, I think 13 people, 30, 13 people quite small, yeah. And the small silly tree I told was only six people. <laughs> so obviously, you know, we want to grow big, you know, and in the Qigong energetic point of view, yeah, more you participate, you know, more people engage in the retreat, then bigger the energy field becomes. Then longer you engage, then more powerful the Qi field become, more intense, more deeper becomes. So these two things, one is the skill, yeah, large as large as possible. And as these depths come from the intensity, the time, the consistency, accumulative experience. So these are a simple you know, parameters we need to be aware, continuously cultivate that way. So, but now with online possibility, I would really encourage the teacher to experience you know, starting online classes, online weekend workshop, then extending from one day to two days, to three days, to five days. And it's become very natural evolving process. Then when you're ready to do in-person retreat can happen the same way, you know, starting one day workshop, then, you know, two day workshop, eventually five days, eventually longer. And I think it's all about doing it, just doing it. Yeah, then you discover what is possible. Yeah, so anyway, if we can support you, would love to help in any way possible. Yeah, thank you for asking that question. Wonderful. 
Wonderful. Uh, thank you for answering this question so thoroughly. And uh, I'm glad to know that uh, your retreat is available to teachers of other disciplines and traditions. Uh, so I will have to talk to you about uh, perhaps coming uh, to New Mexico with my retreat as well. Absolutely. And, uh, and another great question I just received was from David about um, uh, how making sure that the participants attending the retreat experience the long lasting changes after the retreat is over. Uh, so what do you do uh, to facilitate uh, permanent changes in their participants in your retreats? Yeah. You know, during the retreat, we have intense time to go as deep as possible with all the support, all the nourishment, all the experience as human being, you know, in all these level of physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, more consciously making choice and deeply connecting, including the commitment to change, the deeper change of energy patterns, you know, mindsets and choices and the actions and so on. Even, you know, our, um, story of life, so on. So can making really deep, substantial changes during the retreat time. Then the question is equally important. How can you sustain the change? So there's two kinds of change. One is, you know, short-term changes. And that's relatively easy to do, yeah. And another is long-term change. That's more difficult. So in a way, it's like in the retreat, make it possible to kind of make the change in for long term, you change the direction, but that change is still not stable yet. Yeah, stable yet. This pattern is formulated by a whole life history. Decades, decades of stress, decades, decades of mental, you know, uh, stress, emotional stress, even physical stress. So now you change the direction, not just for one day, for whole retreat, you discover what is possible, what is a new direction, what is a new deeper connection. But that's still kind of short-term experience. The change can be sustainable, but the experience is still short-term. So in order to yeah, carry that momentum, even deepening that experience, now become possible when you go home, continuing the online practice, online connection, even online membership you know, connection. And that is like really the best design, the best opportunity we have for first time in human history. <laughs> Before, you know, that's why in the Medicine Chicken Hospital, we need a four weeks of retreat. Yeah, people stay for three months, then something really stabilized within them in terms of including their commitment. So when they go home, they can practice with that. Uh, in back then, is audio cassette. Yeah, audio cassette. There's no video guided practice. So they can practice as much as possible when they go home. There's a minimum support available when you go home. So now it's different. Yeah. So now I have also, yeah, the teacher, the teaching, the online community, the guided practice, addressing these questions and deeper inspiration, empowerment, addressing the deeps, the challenge become possible ongoing basis, ongoing basis. And so that is the combination. The retreat, the online study, not just study, learning deeply, but more is the experience, cultivating that, stabilizing this new experience, yeah. Then become natural eventually, become natural, become a living experience. In the beginning is the learning, I mean, learning experience. Yeah. And then become uh, um, eventually it's like, um, you know, a living experience. Yeah. That's the way the question is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's an excellent answer. I hope you are satisfied, David, with this answer. I think it, it's a really important question that you brought up because uh, it's, easy to experience some massive transformation when you are removed from your habitual environment you have an immersion experience at the retreat center everyone is on the same page uh, the retreat leader and other people are facilitating your process 
and then you go home and you can easily backslide into your old habits and old lifestyle and old stereotypes of thinking. Um, that's one of the reasons why I also pioneered the whole profession of Qigong coaching so that people would not just experience the breakthrough, but that uh, then backslide into their old habits, but actually develop new habits and develop new awareness based on energy principles and the uh, principles of uh, integration rather than compartmentalization of different events and even the practice and daily life no longer compartmentalized or, or separated. I always coach people how to integrate the Qigong practice in their daily life so that I don't just teach another Qigong style, I teach a Qigong lifestyle. Now that obviously is something that creates a lasting transformation. And uh, just so that uh, you can experience it, you are welcome to book an appointment with me. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna make it available to everyone on this call just for being here with us today and to celebrate uh, the autumnal equinox. Well, if you are in the Southern hemisphere, obviously for you, it's the spring equinox. <laughs> I want to give you a gift. I want to give you a complimentary Qigong coaching session. You're welcome to book it at the link that I posted in the chat. And please book it for the next week or two because we are starting a new certification program after that and I will be super busy. Uh, but if you want to experience Qigong coaching session firsthand, here is the link, calendly.com slash tantrapa. Feel free to book it. Uh, in the next week or two. Now, uh, any other questions uh, for Master Ming Gu before we wrap up? Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand and uh, shoot. Well, if I don't see any hands being risen, uh, let me ask you this question, Ming Tong. What about your own uh, Qigong retreats. Who are they for and what makes them special? Mm, thank you. Um, thank you for the generous offer for the coaching session. And I know fully respect you started this coaching um, process long time ago. And honestly, in the beginning, it was like, huh, what is that? What is that for? So but now through my own process of teaching, working students closely, realizing is the power of coaching, also the need of coaching in this process, especially as many, you mentioned, integration and so lifestyle in general. So that's so wonderful. You being really committed to that. And um, so for our own Qigong retreat, yeah, we basically it's for everybody in general, but particularly, you know, three kind of um, group of people. One is the serious practitioners, yeah, whether for health reason or spiritual, you know, reason. And second is for people who are desperate, <laughs> who are desperate <laughs> with a uh, all kind of issue in their life, and they tried everything. They don't know what to do. They want to make change, and they're ready for making a big step. Yeah testing the water being bigger ways. So that's this like two group, yeah. Then in the middle, what's in the middle is like people who are, you know, have been exploring a little bit here, there, and not sure what it works or not, how much they want to the commitment, but they have been kind of searching for long enough to know what the next step is bigger commitment. So retreat, is help them to make a bigger commitment to see, you know, really experiencing, discovering what is possible, what is the next step. And so this kind of sweet kind of people, but among all that is also a lot of healthcare professionals. They want to learn Qigong for not only for themselves, but also exploring the possibility of using Qigong to enhance their professional feel professional service to others. And that is really 
incredibly beneficial. Yeah, so these are a few kind of highlight group of when we attract and we can serve, but in general it's like open to everybody. Fantastic. And who uh, would it not be suitable for? Mm. Uh, I cannot think of anyone. <laughs> anyone willing to try? Qigong is like that, you know, you know, here everybody, you know, want to understand everything, uh, believe the savana, but Qigong is really about the experience. Yeah, you do it. As long as you will. There willing, are no counterindications. Uh, that's right. Willing to do it. <laughs> then <laughs> you can make a you know, choice like after you know, whatever experience, then this choice read into next experience, then more experience you read into next choice. And that's kind of life is, you know, what life is. So I don't think uh, anyone is excluded from it or anyone is you know not suitable for this it's like any ages you know any spiritual or, uh, culture or religious background you know people with diagnosis of severe disease or totally 100 percent healthy <laughs> you know <laughs> so that's the beauty of energy it's like the most universal language yeah wonderful well, I want to thank you once again for sharing about your work and about your wonderful retreat center in New Mexico. And uh, how would people be able to learn more about your retreats uh, if they want to participate in them? Yeah, I'll Maybe put, you can... uh, put a, the link in the chat box. Uh, so basically, Chi Center dot com forward slash retreat and you can go there now take a look of our website just um, very comprehensive information available but also even more video you can watch um, inspirational video is on that same page so our retreat day is happening around the corner less than 10 days october 1st we start in the first week then continue next week and totally three weeks people can come for one week or up to three weeks can join in person which i recommend mostly but otherwise you can join online as well and it's open to public does not require any previous experience of qigong our chinese culture and uh, there's no any kind of limitation of diet anything like that and um, so you can also again join online and it's also you know the important choice for a serious practitioner often take advantage of the retreat equally you know meaningful even more meaningful in a way than just beginner students so uh, post that in the um, in the chat box and uh, feel free to reach to us in, you know, our staff can help ask any question about food, about lodging, about everything. Yeah, so thank you so much for this opportunity to share my passion, share each other's passion together. Well, thank you. And I look forward to seeing you. I'm gonna be back stateside in the winter and spring and um, uh, we'll have to get together at your wonderful place. Wonderful. Looking forward to that. Let's schedule a conversation soon, Lama. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, well, and thank you very much, everyone, for being here today. It's fantastic to see you here. Uh, I want to wish you a happy uh, equinox. And let's uh, connect again in the fall. Namaste. Namaste, namaste.